Welcome to our lecture on Reverse Engineering Amazon.com's Database Design. My name is Ken Walsh. The purpose of this presentation is to understand some of the information needed to operate Amazon.com, but really more importantly, examine how information needs are translated into database design and understand generally the design process for database creation. Note what we'll look at today applies to any relational database. So it could be Microsoft Access or Microsoft SQL Server or it could be IBM's DB2 or Oracle, another relational database. Here's Amazon.com and any of the information you see on this page that could change over time is stored in a back-end database. So the way databases work actually hasn't changed very much um, in the days of the internet. Before the internet we had relational databases and now we have web pages that make nice easy to use front ends in front of those databases but the relational database behind this is very similar to older business systems. So when you look around the screen when you see your account you should kind of recognize that we need to store information about customers. You can see the, see the shopping cart there would have could have items in it. This one doesn't have any items. The wish list on the upper right. Different products for sale need to be kept in inventory. So if you take a, a first crack at this, uh, at, at your design for a database, you look at the major categories of information that are needed. So for example when we see your account that indicates that we need to store information about customers. The wish list indicates that we need to keep track of the things that a customer is wishing for. Products you can see we're selling lots of different kinds of products and we certainly need to know the current inventory of that so we can tell our customer whether or not we can buy it and deliver it on time. So the first thing we'll look at is table design. A database is a collection of tables and the tables represent the major classes of information being stored. So we usually name them singular, singular nouns and from our previous look at Amazon we saw customer, product, wish list, shopping cart, and order are needed. So here we drill down on what a customer is to Amazon.com and you can see there's really a lot of information about a customer. We have information about their credit cards information about the programs that they participate in like rewards programs and things like that whether or not they allow advertisements uh, by email um, and then obviously their address field design so once we've kind of specified some of the tables we want to use Within a table, a table being a major class of information, are all the bits of information about that class. So the fields, for example, a customer would have a name, an address, uh, email address, uh, might have a date of birth, different things like that. A product might have uh, quantity on hand, description, name, things like that. Okay, so the fields are the particular pieces of information that we're storing within that table. Um, noted here, it says fields are atomic pieces of information. That just means they're indivisible. When we get down to the level of the field, it should be just one piece of information. So a simple example of that is the name. We don't store the name as a single field, but we break it out into three fields first name, middle name, and last name because those are indivisible. And the reason we do that is because we're setting up the computer, the relational databases, to be able to use this information in lots of different ways, any old way it's needed. 
So on one report, you're printing maybe first name, then last name. Another report maybe is printing last name, comma, first name. And if we divide that into separate fields, it's really easy for access to display it in those different ways. Whereas if we displayed the full name or stored the full name in a single field, it would be hard to break it apart if we wanted to show it different than that format. Um, so for the customer down the bottom of the page here, we see that a customer is going to have a first name, middle name, last name, email, date of birth, accepts ads, address line one, address line two, city, state, and zip are just some of the fields. It probably will be more than that. That's just kind of our first pass at it. Notice how I've broken up the address into the, its components. Primary key. So we've designed a bunch of tables. We've figured out a bunch of fields of information that each table needs. Now, we, every one of those tables is going to need one of the fields to be a primary key. The primary key is a unique identifier for the information in that table. If you've used a student ID before, that student ID uniquely identifies a student, and that's an example of a primary key. Um, and the primary key is really critical in relational databases because we'll see the information in one table often refers to or is kind of related to information in another table. So if you can think we just made a customer table, well, we might also have an order table that has information about the order. Well, clearly, if we have an order, we need to know what customer it goes to. Well, we can very quickly point to the customer by just defining the primary key of the customer in the order you know customer three or whatever made this order and it's real without duplicating a lot of information about the customer in their name we know what customer would go with that order so the primary key is a way we uniquely identify a record within a table and it's kind of the basis of how access puts information together or any relational database puts information together So let's take a look at the wish list. Uh, I went into the wish list here at Amazon.com and looked for Steve Jobs' wish list. Uh, not the Steve Jobs, but some other Steve Jobs that happened to come up. And uh, you can see that Steve Jobs uh, wants a book to become a human being. Um, you can see that that book was added on September 13th, 2011. So this is giving you some of the ideas about what information needs to be stored in our wish list table. Um, one of the things I can point out here, though, that wish list table might have less information than you think. Because look at all that information about the book. It's, it is the title, the author, the price, whether it's in stock. Do we need all that information in the wish list table? Well, actually, no. Because we're going to have a book inventory table somewhere in our system. And that'll have all the books that we sell. And that'll have the full information about the book. So when a particular customer wishes for a book, what we'll do is in the wish list, we'll just reference it by the book's primary key. Remember how the customer had the primary key? The book inventory will also have a primary key like book ID or something similar. So when we make up a wish list, all we have to do is say that a certain customer, we'll refer to them by their customer ID, wants a certain book, we'll refer to that by its book ID. Now, additional information that's needed just in the wish list, we might have to add. So where you see that the wish list item was added on a certain date, we'll have to record that in the wish list because it's different for every person wishing for that book. So here's our fields for our wish list table. The, again, the wish list web page put a lot of information on the screen, but it was all drawn from other tables. We just need to reference it in our database design. So always use a primary key. So we'll start with a wish list ID. Point to who the wish list is for. That's customer ID. I say point to, right, because we're just recording the customer ID here in the wish list table. But if we need to know their name and address and phone number and all the information about them, we'll go over to the customer table and we'll look up that customer ID. Again, that might sound tedious, but it 
it keeps us from duplicating information and relational databases will do that almost automatically for us so it works out pretty well product id references the product that is being wished for and then date added when we reference the primary key of another table to kind of point to it we just call that give it the fancy word foreign key so far in this the wish list id is a primary key and the customer ID and the product ID are foreign keys in the wish list table because they point to the primary key of another table. What about orders? Customers make orders, right? So we have to keep some fields of information about the orders they make. All right, so let's see. Uh, order ID is actually left off of the screen. Every, every order should have a key like an order number. But we'll ignore that for a second. Every order is going to have a customer ID, right? We want a, that foreign key to point to the customer that placed the order. Probably want an order date. We might want a shipping address. Um, shipping address, putting shipping address here, it's, it, it sort of depends on your business idea of how your business ought to work. You know, for example, if you're always shipping to the customer's address that you already put in the customer table, you might not need it here. But... If you want to give the customer the option of shipping to another address that's unique just to this order, then we need it here. So we'll include it. Product ID. That's the ID of the product they, they picked. Could be a book or a camera or a pair of jeans, whatever. Quantity. How many? They might want three of those. Well, they might not want three books, but if it was pencils, they'd want five or ten pencils. And the price. One strange thing happens here. This will not work quite like this in a relational database. The reason is those last three fields actually have to repeat an arbitrary number of times. Right? The order only has one customer ID and it only has one order date, but it might purchase more than one product. For example, they might want pencils and pens and erasers and paper, right? Three, four different products, any number of products conceivably. Each one of those products will have its own quantity and price. So these three fields repeat. The technical term for this is a repeating group. And relational databases do not allow repeating groups because they're always kind of, if you can picture the data, they're kind of square where every row and column is filled in. They don't have a bunch of blanks like to repeat the product like you might assume in Excel or something like that. So what it means when you see a repeating group it means you have to break it apart into two tables. We're going to have to keep those order items in one table so that we can have any number of them associated with the order. And we'll have an order table that has just the basic information. Let's see what that looks like. So we'll have two tables. We'll have the order table and the order line table. The order table will have the order ID, its primary key. It'll have the customer ID foreign key pointing to the customer that placed that order and an order date anything you, that's unique to that order as a whole but over in the order line table we'll put each one of those line items like the pencils will be one line item in the order line table so we'll have order line ID start with a primary key as always then we'll have the order ID here this is now a foreign key pointing to the order table why? Keeps all the lines that go with one order together. So if they order pencils uh, and pens, they'll both have the same order ID and we'll know to put them together in the same order. So some of the key takeaways from this presentation should be what's the concept of a table? It's the major pieces of information or classes of information that we're storing in our database. Field is a uh, atomic piece of information within a table that makes up the detailed information of the table. Primary key is a unique identifier for records within one table. A foreign key is used when one table needs to reference or point to another table. And remember, we can have no repeating groups. So if you see a situation that looks like a repeating group, it probably means a new table has to be added. Thanks.